Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everyone. This is Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. This is episode 108. And yes, <laughs> I know it's been a while since I got an episode out. And that's because we've got some changes going on around here. If you haven't noticed, especially if you've been following Arizona Talk Radio, we have a studio now and uh, we're actually working on, uh, actually this week that we're actually transmitting this uh, show, on doing live shows or pre-recorded shows with visual. And uh, we have well, actually a couple of interviews coming up. We have one uh, uh, just after this show and we have another one with some folks that are out there traveling full time and uh, quite excited and trying to get this new format set up to work with our schedules and everybody else's schedules and, and giving the, uh, the show a little bit different look and a different aspect. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> I was going to take the time to uh, talk about winterization a little bit, even though we're kind of getting over the, uh, uh, the season a little bit. But uh, one of the things, if you were watching on uh, Outdoor Travel Channel, is, you know, Sherry and I went up to uh, Central Oregon. And one of the things that, you know, everybody talks about putting, you know, uh, uh, antifreeze in the lines and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and uh, But what I've noticed, especially I come down here and I see people, they have uh, their RVs and stars and stuff. I would really recommend, and <clears throat> you have to be careful when you do this, is to uh, seal anything that has an opening in your RV, like your refrigerator, like your uh, hot water tank, like your um, heat heating system. Um, what I do, because I want to keep the critters out, and even when you do that, you'd be amazed how critters can get in, is uh, I tape that stuff up, and I find a tape that's easily, well, that removes fairly easy, doesn't leave a... Uh, a coating on your RV but even if it's did it was worth it besides getting a you know a, a squirrel or a mouse um, making a nest or something inside your refrigerator system and causing a fire so anyway if I wanted to add anything to winterization it would be that sealing up your openings to the outside world just by doing something simple by just using tape um, I would really highly recommend you do that even when you're storing your RV so not just necessarily for winterization, but if you're stirring your RV or if your RV is sitting on the side of the house or something, especially for a couple of weeks or months, I would seal all those holes or find some kind of way of doing that um, that's easy, easily removable to keep the critters out because yeah, they could cause you some havoc and even cause you a major fire um, if they decide to do some nesting especially around the burners of your refrigerator or anything else so food for thought and I hope that helps you out so it's been quite humorous uh, I have a few folks that send me links to different videos and stuff like that and some crazy reason I decided to go ahead and subscribe to uh, uh, just incredible up in Canada again and I I don't know why I do that. I just torture myself. But, uh, uh, you know, I guess he must be the king of the Canadian um, van dwellers, I guess. But a uh, uh, crazy kid. Um, however, he does bring up, you know, good subjects and things like that. So um, he was uh, on there once again defending the e-beggars and, and people out there. And, and uh, you know, I know folks like, you know, that we call people out on that stuff. And I want to make it clear, there's kind of two divisions in that area that I get concerned about. Um, the first one is, I'm, well, I'm not, con I mean, I'm, I'm happy for and not concerned about is those folks that go out there that are uh, either in you know, disabilities or a vet or low income or fixed income, um, trying to, uh, well, the problem is out there is affordable housing. That's, really comes down to that and and so I want to make sure I make it clear that I 
think it's wonderful that the RV industry or anything or like even the class B kind of uh, designs in class C's are a way for people to have a roof over their head, enjoy life, not, you know, because uh, rent right now is incredible in all the cities. Uh, it's a little better here, you might say, in Arizona as it is in like Seattle or California. And uh, I can certainly see how the RV could um, get people out. Well, you know, the last resort is going to be living in a tent. I mean, that's affordable housing, and that's insane. And I'm going to keep telling people to please visit a site, especially on YouTube, called Invisible People. Invisible People. And <clears throat> that site uh, focuses on homeless but occasionally they'll come up with stories about people that are living in RVs and some of them are broke down and and that's kind of like a problem but there's a kind of a step up from that where people are enjoying life uh in fact Bob from um uh cheap RVing he's interviewed a few folks where you um you'll see where they're trying to survive on like a thousand dollars a month and disabilities or less um, or they're divorced or had a medical issue or something like that and you know uh, just can't afford housing and that that's sad and uh, <clears throat> is also causing you know what's going on with uh, uh, the homeless issue now recently uh, we did some homework here in Arizona and found out that the uh, uh, homeless uh, numbers are actually declined um, not sure what's caused that, and we'll kind of do more research in that area. But um, my my other concern is the ones that go out and are what I feel like are trying to cheat life. Now I agree when you're between your 20s and 30s, you should uh, sow your oats. I guess I don't know what you want to call it. You know, uh, enjoy life a little bit. But I mean, hopefully, you know, you've got you know they're going to school or learning a skill or something like that. But to uh, hit the road with a you know a low cost RV and your uh, and then uh, expecting your viewers to pay for it um, gets a little perturbing. I mean, it just every other you know every video is like look at the link below. We have Amazon link here and there. There's Amazon. You know, um, I just showed you a camera. You can buy yours down below, and they're just trying to get a commission. But you know, it's just. The concerning part is is the fact that, you know, we're all kind of influencing people's ideas and opinions. And uh, I worry that you know, we're sending this uh, uh, signal out that, hey, you know, live for the now, be free, don't worry about what everybody thinks and all that stuff, just go out there and be a gypsy. And, uh, you know, I just worry that well, that's not a good signal. I, you know... Uh, now, I can certainly see where, you know, folks can graduate school, maybe have some skills as far as learning how to do certain trades and stuff like that, or get their degree and hit the road and do virtual work or be able to uh, support um, different programs that are maybe uh, temporary only. Um, but, uh, you know, if we all start doing that, I mean, our society is just going to you know, crash and burn. Um you know, something to say. In fact, I was really just tickled pink. My son, um, who it took him till he got in his 30s to actually get his first home, but now all my kids have all, you know have their own houses now, including us, and uh, kind of living that uh, tough to do American dream type thing. But there's a lot to say for that, and I know in the long run, when they're hitting the 55 on up that some of those steps that they've taken now between owning a house and hopefully now they're doing some 401ks and stuff, that they'll have, be in a much better position when they get towards their retirement uh, time. But, you know, yeah. and it's and I do, I really do enjoy the people that go out there that do great photography. Um, like, uh, I'll say the name Nomadic Fanatic. you got to admit that, uh, you know, uh, he does pretty good shows and he, uh, he does... Uh, he, he takes the time to do his videos right. He uh, uses a, uh, unlike me, I should uh, do more, is he uses a uh, uh, 
a leveler for his, uh, <laughs> I can't remember the name right now, um, for his camera and keeps everything as nice as he can do. And uh, I, as, over time, because he's learned the hard way, uh, keeps his videos non-political and, and keeps, tries, you know, occasionally he loses it. But all in all, he does a pretty good job. So uh, he's kind of broken the threshold a little bit. <clears throat> And then there's all the copycats behind them trying to catch up. And it's like, uh, I don't know. And uh, I also watch like Living Free and some of those guys. And it's like, oh, Lord, man. Um, and, then, and then I can't understand why they're single. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I want you to be. be <laughs> you want to be my girlfriend? I uh, I live in a camper and I live in parking lots and I try to get things for free and I'm eating raviolis every day so uh yeah anyway but it's you know I hope you can see where the concerning areas are are is um you know when it comes to fixed income low income things like that the RV living uh and and like once again Bob from uh um cheap RVing he does a good job at interviewing people that are living his kind of lifestyle at a very low budget and and being happy and that's great i mean why if you're on fixed income and you're struggling to pay for an apartment or a single bedroom place and and you can't afford to eat and 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 maybe even go watch a movie or something that's insane and uh so yeah i mean anything we can produce or do to uh, create a uh, a low income housing for people that are on fixed incomes and have issues like that uh, uh, or just living off of social security uh, it's sad that the RV industry's got to be the ones that that can um, do this for them because I don't think even the, the tiny home people are producing uh, housing f affordable enough for low income people unless they build them and rent them out and so uh, I'm, I'm not convinced that tiny homes is the answer because they're not building them affordably. Uh, where they, others can get into an RV affordably um, that actually runs and can go places may still require you know, work and maintenance, but um, at least they can afford to get into one. So anyway, so that's kind of, uh, kind of reaffirming what our uh, comments and, 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 and concerns are in that area. Um, but yeah, uh, love to hear your feedback on that stuff. We do appreciate all the uh, links that get sent to us and the articles. Uh, <laughs> some of them I just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I can't believe some of this stuff. But anyway, uh, I do want to kind of review a little bit uh, in the next segment of what we have coming up and what we're trying to change on RV Talk Radio. And we hope you like it. And I'd love to hear your feedback once we start attempting it. <laughs> and that's the word attempting. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so uh, I also want to remind you that our shows here on RV Talk Radio are also played on Good Talk Radio, uh, I think, three times a day. So uh, um, once again, just go to goodtalkradio.com, and you can uh, listen to our 24-7 radio station there. It's got all kinds of talk shows in it, but it also has uh, RV Talk Radio on it. So all you have to do is go to the actual website of Good Talk Radio, and go to the schedule, and you can see when we're playing all our different episodes of RV Talk Radio. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of a new way or a great way to uh, get the word out. Plus, uh, it helps our advertisers, too. So, And speaking of advertisers, here's one now. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV Refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. 
Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. Yeah, those folks at uh, Ford RV Refrigeration uh, have a great website and have some great resources if you're trying to troubleshoot your your RV refrigerator. And I, I actually had to use them, and uh, thank God they showed me some stuff. So uh, anyway, what uh, the example that I wanted to show you is, you know, when people advertise with RV Talk Radio, uh, and it doesn't always have to be just RV related, but it could be something an RVer would use, or uh, you know, as a family, because not all RVers are just RVing, they're also that's their home. Anyway, uh, what's cool about the uh, exposure we give our advertisers is, yeah, you heard it on you know this podcast, which is quite popular, but it also plays on the internet radio stations, which is national and international. And so uh, we really give the exposure to our uh, advertisers. So if you have a product or service and like to uh, find an affordable way to advertise it, what's really cool about podcasts and stuff is it's not, it's not like the radio station you hear in your car where the you know, station, you know, the commercial gets played once and then it's over. And maybe they'll say, oh, well, we'll play it 20, you know, 20 times a day. Well, and it, but it's over. When we run people's ads, they're on forever. Because uh, usually when people find your podcast, they tend to want to go back to some of the older episodes and, and kind of catch up. And they get a kick. I was kind of watching like our old, uh, <laughs> our old audio shows, uh, some of the first ones, you know, it was like, we didn't have as good equipment. We we're trying to figure out our mojo and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but the cool thing is, is any commercials or advertising we did uh, for any company, it's still there. And so you, it's not just like a one-time deal and you're done. If you advertise with podcasts and internet radio stations, a lot of times your stuff will be permanently out there. So it's a good investment um, in return on the dollar. So, uh, yeah, if you ever get interested in to uh, want to advertise a product or service that you have or do or uh, know of other companies and stuff, uh, once again, it helps us. Please uh, make sure you uh, give us a holler and see what we can do for you because we go so farther beyond just the podcast. Um, you know, this podcast is on iHeartRadio. It's on Spreaker. It's on iTunes. It's on TuneIn. It's on uh um, a bunch of other stuff. I can't remember them all. It's, it's just insane now. I think we just got on Spotify. It's like, wow, we, I mean, we're really getting out there. And, uh, you know, and then we're on, of course, internet radio, and uh, <laughs> you just can't go wrong. So, uh, uh, you know, and of course, that helps the funding of the stations and stuff like that, too. So, uh, and if you don't uh, have a product or service and you want to help support the stations or a podcast, just go to the website at rvtalkradio.com and you can give us a donation. It will go right to the company and it just helps. You know, We just invested in a brand new studio, which I'm going to talk about, and new mixers, new boom mics, new lights, new cameras, uh, new earphones and software and uh, jumper cables and um, it was a good investment, and so we're hoping to uh, take this sh the show a step farther up. Um, now, we're already doing all of our new shows in a new format on Arizona Talk Radio, which is me and Derek, and uh, Derek's going to actually help me with some of my future RV Talk Radio shows. What I like about Derek is he's not an RVer. He's an outsider looking in, so he's going to ask the questions of, of what people are going to ask that are watching the show that are not RVers yet. And uh, I think that will be a great thing to have on the show. Because, you know, you get everybody on the panel that's RVers, and all it is is pro-RVing, and we don't hear, you know, the other side of the story. Because remember, we focus on RV lifestyles. So we're not really into, I mean, we do, you know, of course I did early in the show, we do talk about, ideas and, and processes and stuff to uh, improve your RV lifestyle, like we were talking about winterization, winterization earlier, um, and we'll do that. But, I um, mean, basically, we still focus on the lifestyles. So one day we may be talking about the van dwellers, and next time we'll say, oh, well, what's the guys doing in a million-dollar machine? So anyway, uh, so, yeah, and so uh, I do want to kind of uh, spend a little time in the next module talking about what we're doing in the future. So here's the deal, guys, is uh, 
you know, we're, you always want to step up your game a little bit here. And so uh, sometimes it takes a little time and money to get it all set up. So the time and the money has been spent. <laughs> and we're slowly getting ready to try uh, kind of switching back and forth from uh, new uh, uh, live shows, uh, pre-recorded video shows turned to audio, and then good old, just what, like this show is a straight old podcast. Um, all of which will still be put on the podcast, but there will always be a, a audio version of a live show. So um, because of the nature of RVing and, and trying to do interviews and stuff like that, we can't necessarily always schedule a live show at a certain time uh, like we can with Arizona Talk Radio. So we're going to do the best we can until we kind of f find out what our mojo is. So. Uh, basically, our new studio can handle three people uh, on boom mics. Uh, we're using a, re a green screen now, uh, brought a new mixer, uh, totally a separate new room um, and lighting just for the, the show. And it's also being shared with other shows like Arizona Talk Radio and some of our other stuff. Um, it's actually the same, <laughs> same studio that we produce the uh, puppet show or puppets. Uh, the turds um, videos, um, we actually use the same green screen. So, uh, yeah, it's a kind of a busy sector of, uh, um, of what we're doing here. Is It's shared with other um, folks uh, or other shows, and uh, that's good because that way it's kind of a good investment. So uh, I hope you like it, and we'd love to hear your feedback as we go along. There will be mistakes. There will probably be you know, sound issues we're working with or how we're going to um, do our shows. Um, we're probably not going to live stream on YouTube, YouTube, but after the live stream's over, we'll upload to YouTube. Uh, just because uh, um, then we're, you know, we're catering so much to live streaming that we're not actually focused on the show. And I, uh, I want to make sure that we don't get too out. So our, our live shows will be produced on Facebook. And then, you know, we keep copies of the show. We record it as we do it. And then we edit it later uh, to make it nicer and shorter uh, on YouTube so you don't have that long wait time in the front and the long endings and stuff like that. We actually bring the video in, chop it up to make it shorter and more to the point so it's not that long. You know how you go to some of these live shows on Facebook, which you'll we'll have the same problem is that you kind of have that waiting period of two to three minutes in the front as everybody's getting on and they're uh, sending out invites and stuff, and then they start the show. But when you watch the YouTube version of the same show, that part will be gone. So, yeah, uh, that's the plan. <laughs> so, that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. So, anyway, uh, I do appreciate the notes I get on feedbook, <laughs> feed, Facebook. Uh, uh, showing me different kinds of articles and, and news and stuff like that. And uh, um, uh, I do want to take the time to, to uh, thank Tyler for uh, sending me uh, uh, little bits and tidbits of information. That, um, you know, it's so hard to monitor all this stuff. And um, we're overwhelmed with so much data over here that it just drives you crazy. Um, and uh, I think some of the newer folks, we, you know, we still watch do it justice and we still watch uh, um, <laughs> let's say I just look at the thumbnails of freedom theory uh, uh, oh god uh, don't get me started on that one but the newborn thing is kind of like <clears throat> it's cute but at the same time is like I don't know I uh, at that point as a father I would say would you go buy a house and raise your kid but that's you know but at the same time I can see the cuteness and the funness of traveling but <clears throat> I don't know. It's uh, it's me, old school. Sorry, <laughs> so, we'll leave it there. But I do monitor that. I just can't stand to play the shows. Um, I've been watching Line Screen One, and um, you know, I catch some of Bob's stuff from Cheap RVing, and uh, yeah, and I don't know. I, I I'm not, I, and I once again, I I don't. I'm not bashing them as I am. I just kind of pointing out the lifestyles. And uh, pro or con, um, the big part on RVing is, uh, is it some of these funny situations, is it because of cost of living or cost of uh, housing? 
Um, and uh, gosh, what's it going to look like 10 years from now? Is I mean, this is this the new wave of the future that, you know, housing is just getting out of control price? I mean, you know, uh, I mean, to buy a house, man, especially if you're in a big city, big bucks. And in, in rentals, you know, they're all bought up. And one of the people was saying, like, in 2008, when there was a recession, a lot of corporations you know, they have bought up a lot of houses that got foreclosed, and then they now rent them out. And, and uh, of course, they raise the rent. And same problem that they're having with RV parks. And uh, um, it just, the, the, the formula is not working. And... Uh, you know, when you have a minimal wage, let's say you are employed and you got a job and you're making minimal wage and maybe a buck or two higher than that, it's not enough to pay for even a one-bedroom apartment. And you know, how many you know how many jobs do you need to to make it in in the world? So one of the other things coming up here in the future is uh, we have an interview with uh, oh, what's their name here? Dan and Jen Nevada is what they call their channel. And uh, we're looking forward to interviewing them. They uh, just contacted us just uh, a little while ago. And uh, we have an uh, interview going on with a company actually next week. And then after that, we'll see if we can get, uh, get those folks on. Uh, they're kind of an interesting group or <laughs> couple. And uh, I'd love to find out more about them. And uh, yes, we'll be nice to them, guys. <laughs> and... Uh, um, they're bringing up their last video I've, I just got done watching. Uh, I guess they do a Friday question and answer kind of thing. And they were talking about Internet and the uh, pain in the neck there is to try to get Internet when you're traveling, which we definitely, Sherry and I, went through. And uh, we got to a point that we would try to uh, make several videos. And then, uh, of course, you just use the uh, option on your uh, YouTube to schedule them out and uh, uh, so it was kind of neat because uh, if we got into an area that had bad internet which happened a lot uh, we didn't like the idea either where you ended up having to go try to find a place with internet like Starbucks or something like that forget that I mean we're traveling to have fun not sitting in a star uh, you know inter uh, internet cafe trying to get a file uploaded so we got to a point, you know, we have over 500 videos, and that's just, just you know, just this channel, but our other channels too. Uh, so we probably got 800 videos out there. And so uh, anyway, uh, we learned the hard way that, you know, uh, live your life first and, uh, and learn how to schedule out your videos. So if one week you don't have internet and stuff, you're... you're you're still launching videos. And so that's why you'll run into so many channels that may actually have a video out, but they may have done it two or three weeks ago. And uh, uh, that's the practical way of doing this when you're on the road. And yes, we have the air cards and we have the Wi-Fi Ranger on our rig and uh, definitely uh, comes in handy in, in a lot of situations. <clears throat> but Still, there's just times that even with those connections and stuff, there's still frustration of, you know, incredibly slow uploading and downloading. And uh, you just do the best you can. And so uh, uh, you don't want the Internet and your channel to control your life all the time. And, uh, um, of course, you know, when you see people that are actually trying to do this the, for their income, um, it's their whole life is uh, trying to get Internet connection and and air cards and all that stuff and that gets expensive and uh, um, we use Sprint which is you know not the best out there of course but and we use the air card and we have a uh, um, a Wii boost and we um, yeah, it was okay kind of a pain and our you know favorite thing has always been Wi-Fi Ranger and that's just great when you're in a park that maybe just has internet in their community center or clubhouse or something well, you know, if you have Wi-Fi Ranger, and, uh, and as long as you kind of have a good visual of the of the building, you can pull that internet right into your RV and not have to go over to a club and, and sit around trying to upload a video, talking to strangers that you probably don't really want to talk to. <laughs> so uh, it would be fun talking to those folks. I, I you know, uh, uh, 
they, uh, they'll be in contact. We'll kind of review some questions with them and stuff. But, you know, we're going to ask them the typical questions like, why are you doing what you're doing? How are you doing what you're doing? How are you uh, affording them to do what you're doing? And, um, you know, all those kind of down-to-earth questions. And so, yeah, we don't, uh, uh, you know, and we love all forms of RVing. I think, you know, they were talking about some friends of theirs that were on the road for about eight years and went to France. And, uh, you know, typically I would say that there's not, if you're going to be full timing, I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to be for the rest of your life. Yeah, there's some folks that do it. Um, but generally it's like, uh, you may get a, a time in your life and Sherry and I had it twice where you might have a year, a year and a half of a chance to go through a transition time where you could travel. And I would highly recommend just like, go for it, man, go for it. But keep in mind that you may have to come off the road again. And so uh, uh, I know some people, uh, they're so proud. I was on the road for 10 years and all that stuff. It's like, well, great. I'm glad you were able to do it. But, you know, uh, practicalities and, you know, family and income and health and all these other factors come in. Um, but you may have an opportunity to maybe travel for a year. That's awesome, and that's exactly what Sherry and I did. We did it in 2006, and we did it in 2015 and 16. And uh, uh, precious times, things you'll never forget. And it's like, you only live one, once in life. He's like, uh, if you have the opportunity to travel, um, that's wonderful. But also, keep in mind what, what happens when it's over. Um, you know, how, can you sustain it what, you know, and keep going? Can you do it? Um, what are you going to do when you get off the road? Um, you know, and, and make sure you fill in all those what ifs. Uh, what if uh, we have to, you know, help one of the kids? Or what if uh, one of us gets down ill or something like that? Um, uh, contingency plans are really important. And uh, uh, I know there's so many people out there saying, well, live for the now, get the freedom, go for it, and all that stuff. But, um, your worst nightmare could be later <laughs> if you're not thinking about it. And that's the big thing that we always try to push out. is like, think this stuff through before, during, and after. Um, how do you want to prepare? Do you have a house already? Do you really want to get rid of it? Is there another alternative way to go? Or maybe you want to sell that house, buy something smaller, uh, make sure that your RV is funded well, and then realize that you can go back to something of a base if you need it um and uh you know and <laughs> there's really benefits for like me and sherry having a home now because now we have actually two studios and uh it's wonderful oh my gosh we can produce the kind of shows we want to do and uh uh, you know, you can still live the dream, even if you're not on the road sometimes, live it through other people's eyes and, and help produce or help do shows for them. And so we're looking forward to getting uh, uh, those folks, um, Dan and Jen, I <laughs> get the name of the stick in my head, um, to uh, talk to everybody and, and talk about, uh, you know, the, uh, a lot of us, you know, we will have really good questions. Hopefully I'll have Derek with us because he'll have really good questions because he's kind of like an outsider looking in so uh yeah we're looking forward uh very much to having uh, those folks uh, with us and uh it will be in about two weeks and i think it'll be on episode probably 110 uh that uh we'll make sure to make it clear but i'm not sure if we'll just do a voice or if we'll try to do a skype with them we'll see you and uh either way we'll get a good interview out of them and we're really looking forward to them and i i, I urge them Nothing but happiness and safety uh, as they're going. And uh, uh, they're kind of getting close to our area here in Arizona. And I wouldn't mind catching up with a cup of coffee or dinner or lunch with them. That'd be really fun. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Well, once again, I was watching a video from uh, Bob with um, Cheap RVing. And he was actually interviewing a gal with a minivan in a tent. And... Uh, uh, which is a great option. I mean, gosh, I can't imagine how many years I did 
camping in a canvas kind of a tent uh, we actually bought from the Boy Scouts um, back in the day when uh, money was tight and uh, took the kids out and um, you know nowadays there's so many things you can do to make a, a camp you know, sleeping in a tent a lot more comfortable and uh, uh, I find it amazing <clears throat> And I understand it, so don't 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 misinterpret my uh, conversation here. Of uh, you know, uh, people getting caught up in a rat race where uh, uh, you know uh, mentally they're just about ready to lose it. And and I can say that I mean uh, I've been through that. I've been in situations of jobs and stuff like that, or uh, I haven't had big family crises or divorces or anything like that. So I. I uh, probably can't relate to that as much, but I certainly have met known family members or friends that have gone through it. And uh, so some people, you know, and I remember 2006, the first time we RV'd, it was, it was to escape the rat race. Uh, the world was just getting too heavy on my shoulders and my wife's shoulders, and, and it's like, we've got to make a change here or we're gonna just go insane. And uh, so instead of you know, thinking about divorce or uh, being miserable or uh, coming down ill uh, health-wise or mentally-wise, uh, we chose to so sell our house in uh, RV for about a y two years before we settled down again and uh, kind of got our lives together and kind of figured out what we like and don't like and what we don't want to do again. And so uh, uh, watching the particular interview I was watching about, uh, and the title's called um, A Gal That Lives in a Tent in a, a Minivan, um, you know, that's even another viable option. Um, you know, she, she, the one thing that was nice to see was <clears throat> buying quality equipment. Uh, the tent that she was uh, uh, showcasing was uh, a high-quality tent that was uh, built, built in Salt Lake City. And... Uh, uh, showing the you know uh, and they did take the time to look at the quality of the tent and some of the uh, positive things about security and things like that so uh, I highly recommend you watch the video um, but uh, yeah it's um it's odd it seems odd but understandable uh, when uh, people are trying or want to get their lives together or get their mental state together or get out of the rat race and, and maybe, uh, you know, just, uh, I don't know, detach themselves from this crazy life. And it gets crazy. I mean, insane. Some people thrive off of it. But others are like, you know what? Uh, this I'm going, I'm losing it here and I need to make a change. And uh, so it's a good way to go. They even find a more affordable way to Get out, clear your head, get out of the rat race, be comfortable, and pretty much be able to go. I mean, you, you probably want to follow the fair weather, better weather um, in a scenario like that. But, um, you know, if you had a good uh, minivan for, you know, the room in the back to carry extra equipment and, um, you know, you do have the procedural things you'll have to deal with, like setting up the tent and and uh, all that, but, and, uh, you know, you're going to have to learn how to live out of a bucket, too. Uh, I know I joke about that a lot, but, I mean, the reality is uh, you got to go, you got to go. So, uh, um, you know, and the tent gives you that um, uh, privacy for that, too. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's sad in a way, but um, refreshing in another that, you know, some people need that escape. Some people need to clear their minds. Some people need to get away from a bad situation. Some people have mental issues that they need to, uh, uh, a calming environment that, uh, uh, that uh, boondocking and, and uh, living free like that will, will, will provide. Um, but it's sad that, you know, in a way that that's the re, you know, what people have to do to get in that mode. Um, I don't know what the, you know, I, I still don't recommend it, but I certainly understand it. And uh, I think, uh, you know, a lot of us who would probably never want to be in that scenario or, or do it voluntarily, uh, at least be understanding enough to understand why it's being done. And um, this is, a, you know, this is the other side of you know, where it's good and it sets up a really good scenario for people with low, you know, just don't have a lot of, 
and go and can't afford an RV, um, but still want to escape, uh, you could do it for a fraction of the cost, really, and uh, go out for uh, weeks or months. Um, just uh, get your head together and read some books and clear your mind and and uh, find some calm uh, and and meet a nice community too. Uh, typically, uh, uh, I, I haven't been in the boondocking uh, van kind of life people, and a lot of those guys are kind of introverts anyway. But still, on a friendly uh, notion, like, hey, I'm glad to meet you. I'm just down here, but still leave me alone. <laughs> I need my space. <laughs> um, uh, where in an RV, a lot of times you could be in an RV park and never meet your neighbor. Uh, so yeah, um, interesting video makes you think. I I, I recommend uh, Bob does do good interviews. To um, I'd say there's two video uh, two channels that are kind of good for both sides of the coin. There's the side of what I've told you about is invisible people um, which is about the homeless and in some of their stories is about people in RVs and of course living in tents and then there's this other side which it's cheap RVing which is done by Bob um, where he kind of tries to he I almost feel like he's a cult in a way sometimes he's trying to bring these people in it's like um, but uh at the same time, as he's got a good heart, and he's, you know, if you're going to do this, here's here's your options, here's some ideas, here's some what other people are doing, and 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 uh, um, maybe at least get them out there safely in an, a comfortable way, um, and can actually stay amongst a group of people of like you know like minds of uh, making the experience go well and and maybe even better in the future. So. Yeah, so it's a good channel. So CheapRVing.com, I recommend that's a great channel if this is of uh, interest to you. But on the dark side, um, you also, well, it's not dark side, but uh, understandable side uh, of understanding the next level of that, which is uh, the homeless scenario. Um, uh, invisible People is, um, I believe it's called InvisiblePeople.tv is the actual website. And... Uh, that's hosted by a gentleman named Mark, and we're actually trying to do a set up an interview with him one of these days on Arizona Talk Radio because a fascinating person, and he and he meets, you know, uh, you know, he does interviews of just some real sad scenarios and some good stories um, uh, coming out of some of that too. But he's an advocate for the homeless, and so and we kind of want to be the same as like. Um, anything we can do to keep people from having to go that far where the last resort is living in a tent um, and I'm talking about the homeless not this particular uh, gal that was doing this uh, show with Bob um, we, need, we need to talk about it and we need to keep it in front of people and uh, so once again I'm going to tell you go check out invisiblepeople.tv or the YouTube channel Invisible People and then Bob, of course, he's got a, a decent show. Um, like it's not a lifestyle that I like, but I, I am I admire it for those who need it, want it, and are using it well. And of course, there's kind of the next level after that is the ones that don't really need to be out there, and they want you to try to fund themselves. I'm these are people. Bob interviews is people that, you know, they're on fixed income, limited income, uh, health issues, mental issues, things like that. And I've found a balance. I've found a way to make ends meet. And you got to respect that. They, they found maybe, you know, they're only making a 1000 or 2000 a month off of Social Security or disability or, or things like that or, or less. And they got to find a way to make it, you know, and have a roof over their head. And and eat and still go into doctor's appointments and uh, you know uh, have a little fun they're allowed to have fun too uh, this is the way to go it it's definitely is so food for thought and uh, I appreciate that last interview that Bob did and I urge you to check out his channel so I was gazing through the internet again and I decided to watch a video from Carolyn's RV life and uh, Oh, I, her channel's okay. Uh, not one of my favorites, but uh, 
Occasionally she puts out something that I, uh, I, I get a kick out of uh, or feel is a good gem. And she was uh, talking about the lifestyle that she is, that she's living the lifestyle that she's happy with. And, and that's the cool, I mean, that's the overall big picture of all this stuff is, you know, following your dreams. And some of them are a career or becoming a doctor or a lawyer or something, uh, uh, a programmer or something like that, a gamer. <laughs> I just threw that one out there or you know traveling going abroad uh, uh, RV life or you know stuff like that and uh, I guess the the big point that I got out of one of her comments was no matter what your dream is and what you're going to pursue and I guess that's why we do what we do on this show is to bring out realities and stuff is you're still going to have trauma or you're going to have uh, issues come up and, and and every kind of lifestyle that you do pick out has pros and cons and so we try to bring up all those pros and cons on this show because once again we focus on lifestyle and uh, anyway so you know uh, you know if you're in an RV you're gonna have times where money might be tight or you have a breakdown or uh, uh, have to fix something um, you tr can't get into a campground or uh, no place to boondock or you're in a city that has ordinances that doesn't allow you overnight sleeping and and, and there's you know and or internet if we just talked about earlier the pain in the neck of finding internet but uh you know the one thing i constantly hear is the ones that try to do the vlogging or try to have a youtube channel and stuff um and, and a couple of instances in this show, I brought it up already, is as uh, the frustration of, you know, if you're going to pursue that, you know, you should have a pattern in which, you know, I, just like us, we usually do our RV Talk radio on Mondays, and this will come out on a Monday. Um, but, you know, they want it every week. Well, gosh, you know, you get busy, you try to meet a schedule, you don't have internet, you got other projects going on, you have company. Um it can be a whole nother kind of stress that you may not want to deal with. And so like uh, the folks I was talking about earlier, they're frustrated because, you know, they drive around, can't find the Internet, spend hours just trying to upload a video. And they're just saying enough is enough. You know, where, where do you stop? Well, just remember that 90, 95 percent of people that are RVers out there are not vloggers. They might have a website and post a couple of things or pictures, but uh, they're not doing this you know, YouTube channel must thing. Um, just like for us, it's not really a must. It's more just for fun. Uh, we do not make a living from it, but we uh, uh, try to do our best. To, you know, that's why we have ours is called Outdoor Travel Channel, so we could have more than just the RVing. And uh, uh, yeah, but it, it's a lot of work and a lot of expense. And then most likely you're, you know, it's not often you actually be making a profit from it. Uh, so... Anyway, I guess the biggest realities out there is no matter what your dreams are, no matter what you uh, you pursue or what you want to do in life, it's you know if you're looking for that perfect scenario, it just doesn't exist. Um, you know, weather happens, um, mechanical things happen, and and just kind of be aware of that, and that's life. And, and um, you know, I um, I think that's one of the things that I keep bringing up this young generation is. They, uh, you know, live such a protected life with their parents and they're living uh, at home so much longer and stuff that they just aren't getting that exposure to things that go wrong and uh, don't always go your way or the way you expect it. And so they can't handle it. And it's because uh, they're just not out there. Um, you know, you, you get your first apartment and gosh, yeah. Your furniture sucks and <laughs> you gotta make a power bill or you know gosh all these little realities that all of us have to face and so uh same in the rv lifestyle whether you're boondocking doing the, uh, you know van dwelling uh just you know um, retired and doing the full timing or having a mega machine out there you're going to be inconvenienced it's just how it is and it's the same whether you're RVing or you own a house or apartment. Um, you know, it's just stuff happens. 
So the best thing we can always ask is, you know, the highest percentage of the thing is you're doing what makes you happy and uh, you're living a good life. Um, I, I always hope that everybody's community oriented and is uh, helping one another one way or another. But, you know, <laughs> that's how it is. And uh, uh, whatever you are doing, that you keep striving for a little bit better and better, better perfection, better quality, better uh, ideas, you know, just keep striving to be better. And uh, I get worried about the young generation not understanding the 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 you know pros and cons stuff so well and i just see them having such a hard time uh not handling um you know um, freedom of speech and not handling change or um you know uh gun controls and things like that um so they you know they they, they want everybody to do it for them uh they want government to do stuff for them and, you know, whether it's gun control or whether it's schools or things like that, um, people are people. Uh, uh, guns don't kill people. People do. And and uh, you, you just can't have the, the government and the world covering your back all the time. It's you, it's it's going to be put on your, your shoulders sooner or later. And you got to learn how to deal with that stuff. Um, it's good to understand your mental state. I think that's important too. Um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of these people that are off the grid kind of people. Uh, uh, maybe they're getting in touch with their mental state, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Um, and that's a good thing. Um, nothing worse than being in a scenario you hate and brings out the worst in you, where you can put yourself in a state or a situation that makes you feel good and tends to make you a better person. I think that's definitely the way to go, no doubt. Um, but be aware of like all of these shows you're watching, all this YouTube stuff, it's only a picture of time. It's a photo, of, you know, it's 10 minutes of their life, you know. And uh, uh, it's easy to... It's just like Facebook, you know, everybody watches Facebook and the kids get depressed and suicide. Like everybody's got a better life than me. But you got to remember they're only doing a picture of, you know, they're not, I mean, occasionally you see people putting negative stuff on there or some realism of their lives. But generally there's like showing them the uh, highlight of the day that happened for a minute. And that, you know, as soon as they're done with that, they go back to doing the dishes and mopping the floors or working on a project or going back to work. It's like uh, everybody's life looks better than yours. And it's like you you got to learn that reality that what you're seeing is uh, just a picture, a, a brief moment of time. And uh, you're probably doing it too, so am I. I mean, I, if I put a picture on my Facebook, it's like something funny or something interesting or a picture of a garden or the cat and dog does something funny. And uh, But I didn't show you me you know weeding my garden which is you know i love to show my garden but i'm not showing you all the work involved in doing it i have an rv but i don't see you realizing you know i gotta vacuum the thing and clean the windows and you know make the beds and do dishes and all that stuff clean the you know do the black tanks and fill the tanks get propane and all that stuff but i'll show you that um we might show it to you if we're like trying to show, you know, teach you a little bit. But you know, it's just you got to remember all this stuff you're seeing is just the picture perfect time of day of what's going on at the time. So uh, we try, and it's kind of easier with a show like this to say, this is what happens the other 23 hours and <laughs> 50 minutes in life as an RVer, <laughs> and I hope that's helpful to you. So uh, anyway, so we're really looking forward to uh, next week when we start firing up some new live video type of stuff for the show. Don't know how it's go. If it doesn't go well, we'll go back to this format. If not, you know, or we just do a little bit of it and back and forth. But we urge you, please, to take the time to uh, uh, subscribe to our videos. Subscribe to, uh, make sure you like our uh, RV Talk Radio's Facebook page because that's where the live videos are going to be done so if you want to see the real real live stuff you go to facebook and then uh immediately after that what uh 
transfer it over to a YouTube, but it, you know, it'll be a couple of hours old after that, but it won't be live. You can comment on any of the stuff we put out, whether it's the podcasts or videos, and you'll be able to give us live feedback during the live shows, and we can actually uh, address some of your questions and stuff like that. We always enjoy your feedback. We always ask for constructive feedback and courtesy. Nothing, no reason to be rude, and we try not to be rude either. Uh, we respect every form of RVing that we've talked about, and uh, you know, uh, we bring out just things to think about, and hopefully it helps you with the decisions of what you're going to do in the future, before, during, and after of, of your RV adventures. So, uh, yeah, I think one of the biggest things I want to talk about in the future is uh, how easy it is to get kind of upside down or underwater with your RV and what to do when you get into a situation like me and Sherry where you want to downsize. You know, the world's got this great program of you being able to upgrade your RV all the time when you're talking about new ones and stuff, but when you want to downsize, whole nother problem. <laughs> yeah, so we want to talk more about that. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for uh, sending us great articles, good videos for us to watch, uh, the feedback. I hope you like what you see in the next few episodes, and uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. And uh, uh, if you can catch us on a live show and can uh, uh, you know, uh, chat with us during the show, we'd love it. It'd be a lot of fun. So, uh, I'll have Derek Rentschler with me on the next show. Got some interviews from a, uh, a rental business, RV rental business coming up. And we have an interview with Dan and Jen uh, coming up. Dan and Jen Nevada is what they call their uh, channel. I don't think that's their last name, is it? We'll find out, huh? Anyway, but yeah, so uh, keep an eye out for that. And uh, yeah, um, uh, let us know if you like the new formats and stuff. So. I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. I want to wish everybody happy RVing. I hope you uh, all your travels are safe. And if you don't have an RV yet, I, uh, I certainly hope you get one because there's a lot of enjoyment. So, yeah. Anyway, we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Hey, thank you so much for listening to RV Talk Radio. Look forward to next week when we go live. Please take the time to subscribe, like, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. We'd really appreciate that. Talk to you next time. Bye.